So what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology. iPhone 7, 3.5 years later. Now this video is a direct follow up to my iPhone 7 plus three and a half years later. A lot of people wanted to know specifically about this smaller 4.7 inch model. And a lot of people are actually holding on to this until the iPhone 12. So this thing launched September 7, 2016. So it's quite old here at this point, but because the iPhone SE just came out the 2020 looking very similar to this phone it begs the question how good is this 3.5 years later so we're going to begin with the body the design the fit and the finish this one has an aluminum shell and you know there's still phones today coming out with aluminum shells but a lot of them are going to glass backs mostly so this is kind of not looking too modern anymore but a lot of people like it because it doesn't attract fingerprints too much and also it just kind of looks clean in some areas but it doesn't support wireless charging another thing about this phone is that it's extremely thin the iPhone 7 three and a half years later is still one of the thinnest phones out there it's thinner than the 11 Pro it's thinner than the iPhone 11 it's super thin which makes it really light as well at 138 grams this thing right here is a feather weight of a phone you barely even feel it in your pocket sometimes you're gonna be digging around thinking where's my phone what happened to it um yeah pretty light here and again because it looks just like the 2020 uh, SE mostly you could say that this design really isn't ultra outdated ultra ultra outdated um yeah it is dated and archaic and almost extinct compared to a lot of budget Android phones. But in terms of Apple devices, this one still kind of fits in the lineup, not too bad. The display, how has the display held up three and a half years later? Well, we have a 4.7 inch retina display here. Now, what I really like about this display is that it's very well calibrated. It's always been very well calibrated with P3 color gamut. This thing right here, no true tone, but it did have a very fast 3D touch shortcut feature where you could just kind of punch in very quickly. Now the SE even has a haptic feel, which is still nice, but it's a little bit slower than this one right here. So definitely the display besides True Tone is still quite nice. And of course you can still enable dark mode brought in iOS 13. Another thing about this display is that it has no notch, no cutouts, nothing like that. It's the full 16 by nine resolution, which isn't bad for you. And so when you go into like a browser, for example, and you're reading, you kind of don't have no obtrusions at the top or the bottom. And then when you are watching videos, when you put it into the landscape mode, it will still show the whole video. You probably are not gonna have no black bars, anything like that. Pinching the zooming on this phone is ultra smooth. The software very quick as well on this one. So talking overall about the display though, dark mode is new here and the display experience just because of dark mode, I think is even, even better now in 2020 than it was 3.5 years ago. Of course, no true tone, which is will be missed if you've had a true tone phone, but if you haven't, you won't care. The display is okay in 2020, it's not bad. The software, now I just actually updated this thing to 13.5.1, so it's on the latest version of the software, iOS 13.5.1, and guess what? This one is getting iOS 14, which is pretty amazing. But so it's a little bit different than the newer iPhones. You swipe up from the bottom for your control center. You swipe down from the top for notifications, but at least you can still see your battery percentage, unlike the newer iPhones right there. But other than that, the software is up to date. And how many phones from 2016 still have up to date software? And because the A10 Fusion was such a good chipset, Although it is aging now, it still performs rather well. I mean, you could use this phone day to day with no issues. It's really not slow whatsoever. Apple still sells an iPad with the same CPU in it, although that's gonna get replaced soon. Still, this CPU is quick, even in 2020. It's not blazing fast, but it's quick. And with the iPhone 7, you did get two gigabytes of RAM. It was able to play games pretty well, but multitasking apps will reload on the iPhone 7, but you can play most of the games on here, no problem. You could see right here, you do have space to go ahead and when you're playing games to hold on to the side of this display. Now having that's not too special, but if you're a big gamer, you might actually kind of like this. I kind of like that when gaming to hold on to the sides here a little bit. It really doesn't have any accidental presses on the screen. And the storage on the iPhone 7, three and a half years later has been really good still. I mean, this is N NVMe storage. You can get it up to 256 gigs. So it's not like Apple was behind in 2016 on storage offerings, although you were gonna pay a big premium in 2016 to get 256 gig 
on the iPhone 7. And now I wanna move on to the camera 3.5 years later. Now, this camera can still outperform a lot of Android competitors, especially in the budget price range. I mean, this phone you can get for a couple hundred bucks and you still get a pretty phenomenal camera. I do like the 7 Plus is better as it does have portrait mode, but the video is where it still shines. iPhones are always great video cameras and uh, you can get a budget iPhone like this and get a pretty good video quality that's not going to really let you down for the iPhone 7. Now the front facing camera on here is a little bit weak. It does only 1080p video recording, 7 megapixels. Again, the results for some reason they still turn out very good even though you know it's not the highest resolution sensor or anything like that. You still get a good overall picture out of the front facing camera and live photos is available. So the camera overall, no smart HDR, you still gotta go into the camera settings to go ahead and tweak anything with this phone, which I've always thought is a little bit ridiculous because even budget Android phones can go ahead and tweak the settings right from the camera. And here's your premium iPhones that can't even not do this. You can only go up to 4K 30 on the recording. So it's not, you know, your highest recording available. 4K 60 came with the iPhone 8 that came right after this. You see that almost slipped out of my hands because that aluminum can be quite slippery without a case. And so the iPhone 7 was the first iPhone to get rid of headphone jack and 3.5 years later, most people have AirPods or Bluetooth headphones and are over it by now. But how do the speakers sound now? Should you buy iPhone 11 Pro or Pro Max now? It's been about eight months. Now, since this was the first gen of the speakers, I find them to be a little bit lower than the iPhone 8, the iPhone 10R, the 11. All those newer phones have louder speakers. And especially the bottom one is the really loud one. But what was nice is that no matter if you're covering this part of the phone, you could still hear the phone. But again, they did get better in the next coming iPhones that came after this. They're still okay. They don't sound anything premium though right now. They sound pretty, you know, basic speakers on board, but at least you have them. Since 2016, the battery life never was impressed with the iPhone 7. Uh, it was one of the worst battery life iPhones of the bunch. The 7 Plus, the Plus series was always better. Um, it's not horrible. Like you, It's not like you can't get through a day if you're not using your phone that much, but I'm saying if you're like using your phone a lot, this one is definitely not getting you through a day. I already replaced this one once in here. That's why it still says 99% capacity. But that's really the best solution. If you have a terrible battery capacity or terrible trash battery day to day, just get it replaced. It should help out a lot because you know when these iPhones get low in the battery life, you can just watch the percentages just fall off by the minute. And so going to the phone calls, the phone call quality on here was pretty excellent. They didn't have much of an issue. I had more of an issue with the iPhone 10 and 8 uh, than I did with the iPhone 7. That's probably because I had Qualcomm modems in this one but still the phone call quality was pretty good on this phone and so i don't want to extend this video further than it is it's already over around 10 minutes or so the iphone 7 three and a half years later if you come into this video to see you know is my iphone 7 i'm still using a good phone you want justification well it's a good phone but if you're coming to this video thinking if you should buy i probably would steer you clear of this one three and a half years later i probably would say go for the iphone 8 if you want a budget old iphone but if you can just save up a little and get the SE, you're going to get the same experience with modern stuff inside of it. So do keep that in mind. So the iPhone 7 is on its way out. So the iPhone 7 still supported, which is pretty impressive. But I think in terms of hardware, it's just kind of dated at this point. Let me know your thoughts on it down below. Nick here helping you to mess your technology. Thank you very much for watching. And again, I do listen to your recommendations. That's how this video appeared. Many of you were asking this. So go ahead and leave your recommendations down below. I will catch you all in the next episode. Stay safe, stay well, and peace.